Hi there. In this video, I'd like to show you how to use Drishti to make good quality images. And I've shown, we've talked already about Drishti import, we've talked about Drishti paint, and here's the, I guess, the main program, Drishti itself. Again, it's version 2.6.4. And I want to use a specimen that's also derived from the same website that I mentioned in a previous video. This is the University of Texas Digimorph, and it's a really old scan, actually. This was taken way back in the year 2000. So in computer years, this is sort of the lower Eocene. Um, but it's an interesting scan, and it has some properties that are worth looking at briefly. So what I've done is I've downloaded this uh, very small, for today's standards, very small scan. It's actually about 50 megs in size. And I unpack the zip folder, and I get this. And if I double click on the metadata, um, it's a, a flying squirrel, that's the genus and species, again from the Texas Memorial Museum. And we noted before this occasional uh, uh, lack of isometry in the occasional scan that you'll, that you'll use. Um, and in this case, it's actually quite substantial, right? So the Z dimension is uh, twice as large as the X and Y. And that's going to have an interesting effect that I think anyone using Drishti should, should know about. Okay, so I've already um, converted the two-dimensional uh, TIFF reconstructions into the, the volumetric file that Drishti can understand, right? So it's, in this case, it's a much smaller file than what we discussed before. It's just 126 megs. And I want now to, to render that in 3D. So I'm going to go to my Drishti window. There it is. I'll switch back briefly to my folder containing the volumetric file, and I just drag the header file over to Drishti, and it opens right up, and here it is. And at first glance, well, there's some sort of medium that was used to hold the specimen, and you have to use what's called a transfer function to optimize this and to see the, the pixels, or the voxels, actually, in 3D as voxels, of course. The, th this represents, in two dimensions, the, the distribution of pixel density. So you'll notice there's a bit of a concentration over here and then a lot of more diffuse uh, uh, voxels in this area. And this concentration represents the, the, the less dense part of the scan. And so actually that basically amounts to the styrofoam or whatever was used to hold the specimen when they scanned it. So all you need to do, I'm going to hold down the shift key and left click on, this, on that button right there. And notice that it's symmetrically moving inwards. And when I do that, lo and behold, I can, I can get rid of the less dense voxels and I'm left with the bone and the teeth. Now, you may be saying to yourself, That's kind of, that looks a little squished, doesn't it? And if we go back to the, more, to the Digimorph site, clearly there's something wrong here, right? So this, is not, this skull does not look like this skull. Well, all this amounts to is the fact that in the low-res mode of Drishti, which is where we are right now, it only renders uh, files isometrically. So X, Y, and Z are assumed to be identical. It's not a problem because the next step that anyone using Drishti needs to know is moving into the high-res mode. And you do that, there are a couple options, but the one I'll show you is just hitting F2. Right. So I'm going to hit F2 right now. And it's going to think about it, and now it renders it in, um, I'm going to hit B to get rid of that box, and here we have the correct Z dimension that accounts for the slight um, discrepancy. Actually, it's not so slight. The, the Z dimension was twice as long as the X and Y. Now, there are a couple other things here. It's a little translucent, so that's not really going to make for a terribly nice publication quality figure. I mean, you could still do interesting things with this. So if we go back to low-res mode, I'll, I just hit F2 there again. And I can right-click on any of these anchor points. It's a little bit different than Drishti Paint. At least in 264, you have to right-click on these anchor points, whereas in Drishti Paint, you could right and left-click. So anyways, I right-click on that point, And I can, if I want to see inside the brain case, for example, I can do that. And then I hit F2 again to move into high-res mode. And so there it is. But we have some work to do because that's not, um, we can make this better. So a couple things that I would recommend. First of all, I personally much prefer a white background to a black background. So all I do here is view 
preferences, click on background color, and now I select white. There we go. And, you know, it's a little better, but the bone is still quite translucent. Usually you affect opacity of different uh, parts of the rendered tissues by moving the transfer function here. So I moved it towards the left part of the of the uh, histogram of that distribution of, of voxels. It starts to make things a little more opaque, but it's also bringing back some of this, um, you know, the styrofoam that was holding the specimen when they scanned it, and I don't want that. So I'm going to move that back. Another option that you have is to go under um, toggle and then just untick skip empty skip empty region. So I click that, and that's much better, right? So it's it's rendering more of the voxels that I want it to, right? So that bone is is a little more opaque, and that's actually not bad. So we can see some, you know, some interesting. We can see sutures. We can see roots of teeth here. All sorts of anatomical goodies. A few more things that that I personally like. Um, well, a few more basics about Drishti. So, what uh, you can change the quality of this reconstruction, which is a, a double-edged sword, because the higher the quality in this high-res mode, or stated differently, the lower the step size, right? And that's where I'm circling right there. That's the step size. The more computer processor intensive it is, the more memory it takes. So if I hit page down, you'll note that that step size is moving up, right? If I keep if I keep typing page down. The quality is sort of going down now, but it's more it's more responsive, right? There's less of a delay after I rotate it with the left mouse button. Did I mention that? So left mouse mouse button is rotating it. If I want to change the axis of rotation, I think I can do shift. Oops, no, that's another thing I can show you later. Sorry. If I hit control. If I hit, I'm sorry, let me do that again. If I hit shift, right click, it changes the rotation pivot, right? So now it's going to rotate around that point that I just clicked. If I want to move the rotation point over here, I hit shift, right click again, rotation pivot change, and now it's rotating around that front bit. I'll click out here anywhere in empty space, shift, right click, and it's reset to the scene center. Anyways, I, I interrupted myself. I was just telling you about this step size. Now. That's a pretty nasty looking um, volumetric rendering. So I want to hit page up. And now the step size decreases and the quality goes up. But then it becomes a little less responsive. Right? So now I'm down to 0.7. This it's it's is a pretty small CT scan. Um, so I'll use the mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. OK, what else do I want to show you? I want to show you this shader widget. Right? You can, I can bring this outside of the window to give myself a little more space. Personally, I, I think it looks a bit better with a high diffuse value and a low ambient value. It's a bit, the contrast comes out a bit better. Right? I kind of, that was perhaps a bit too extreme. And then I, I'm also not a huge fan of these specular regions, right? So that's kind of crank. It's quite subtle on this specimen. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Anyways, um, yeah, so those are two values that uh, that are helpful. What else can I tell you? Oh, very important. Probably you want to measure stuff, right? And there are two things worth knowing uh, for measuring stuff. First of all, is that the default in Drishti is to set camera type to perspective. And that, I guess, is most, I don't know, I, it, it sort of accentuates, it amplifies a 3D effect. So if I, um, but on the other hand, it, it's a bit misleading when you want to measure things. So I, I think when you measure stuff, when you figure something that's measured, you should use camera type orthographic, which I just did. Um, and so let's say I wanted to measure the length of, I don't know, one of these teeth. It's a little dark. I guess that reminds me. What I can do is show you another technique, GI lighting. So if I want to I click on function, GI lighting. And if I increase one of these values, light buffer size, light diffusion, let's start with like buffer size to seven, hit OK, and it gets quite a bit brighter there. So that's that way I can see the teeth a bit better. All right. So what I'll do is I'll just measure that that P4, that lower fourth premolar. I'm going to aim at 
zoom right into this. I'm going to shift and left click, and I get a dot that turns blue. It turns green when I hover over it, but when I move away, when I move the cursor away, it's now blue again. And I want to make sure that that's so, let's see, I can shift right click and change the rotation pivot so I don't lose a tooth when I rotate. And that, you know, once in a while you'll click on something you think is the posterior part of an anatomical structure, but because it's 3D and you're looking at it in 2D, it's actually somewhat completely different. So it's, it's good to rotate a little bit and make sure that you're, you've got the right point. So now I want to make another shift left click on the anterior part of that tooth. And, oh, yeah, it's, it's reasonably close to the length of that tooth, right? So now what I do is I hit spacebar and path. And that tells me now, when I move the mouse over that line, it tells me how long it is. Of course, it only can do that because I've, I've made, uh, I've paid attention to the metadata, right? So if I go into view volume information, it will tell me now that the voxel size is uh, 0.04385 in the X and Y dimensions and 0.077 in the Z dimension. I'll go back to my metadata here, and that is indeed what the authors of the CT scan uh, recorded. So assuming that's correct, what I can tell you now is that that lower P4 is 1.5, 1.49 millimeters long. Okay, so that's, that's one thing I can do. And if you want to get rid of that line, you hover over it and then you hit delete. Um, yeah, so, you know, if for taking uh, figures, then maybe I want a scale bar, right? So that's another very important thing. So I'll put my skull in an orientation that, that will be visible and I, I uh, Space bar, I have to make sure the mouse pointer is in this 3D window region. Um, I hit space bar, type scale bar, and then you have to tell it what the unit or what how many units. I mean, the units are already in there. That's when I entered the voxel size, I told it millimeters. So I'm going to use a five millimeter scale bar. And there it is. And you can hover over that scale bar and drag it around. And there you go. You get a nice uh, 3D reconstruction that you can rotate, you can look inside the skull by uh, going back into the low res mode and moving your anchor points appropriately. Um, and, and there it is. I think I'll stop now and hope to see you again sometime soon.